Hello, this is Seption. I'm here for a War Boss Tay 2021 Summer Painting Challenge side quest. Uh, today we are going to be doing a conversion. Uh, we're going to be converting slightly this uh, Soulbite Grave Lord's Vampire Lord. Now, I really like this model. Um, <clears throat> it's got this kind of skinny felt androgynous look it's i i really like the 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 hair with the bats um i love the the scalloped armor um i know some people don't like the head and the hair so much but i like weirder models i like i like more out there visual concepts i think it's great the one complaint i have is this this whole model is like skinny and svelte and dexterous looking but then it's got this big honking mace and a couple of these new soulblight grave lords models have these these big maces and you know for a chaos model i'd love it but for a vampire lord i would rather have a, a nice skinny cork blade sort of thing so we are going to be doing a weapon swap basically the simplest sort of uh, conversion there is there's not going to be too much to it very straightforward um to get the sword we are going to be using i think this blood knights kit uh the blood knights kit does come with a bunch of extra weapons it has enough to give all of the the vampires either lances or hand weapons and the banner bearer the banner is attached to a lance so if you're going to have a standard bearer in the unit and and you definitely are then you're going to get an extra hand weapon so that's the plan i'm not sure if we'll be just changing out the weapons or if if there's a good way to change out on the arm we'll just figure it out as we go so you can you know this isn't planned in advance you can see my whole process um for the tools i've gathered We've got scissors to open the package, some clippers, hobby knife with a nice new blade on it. Uh, if we need some pinning, we've got a pin vise and some brass wire, boop, paper towel, super glue. Uh, plastic glue that should be all we need for the conversion I'm also planning on uh, filling out the base a bit they put this new vampire lord on a big 40 millimeter base I don't know why I think this model would have looked just fine on a 32 and all the previous vampire lords were on 32s so you know it's a big hassle to everyone having to, to figure out rebasing or base adapters or whatever for their vampire lords but you know whatever it's on the big base now i want to use the correct base size but that base is a little sparse so i want to build it up a little bit so for that we've got some medium slate chips some fine slate chips uh box of skinny cork and slightly thicker cork so we'll we'll figure that out uh oh some texture paint fill in whatever is left over so <clears throat> the goal is to have the vampire lord with a nice sword and a bit more built up base and we will see how that goes uh clear up my space So let's start by just opening our package here. Vampire Lord fits on one sprue. Eh, would have been nice if it had some options built in, but whatever. Okay. So we've got our instructions. We 
don't see any reason to mess with this until we've actually got to the point of attaching the weapon. So we're just going to follow the directions to begin with. All right, so we've got our basic assembly done. Uh, let's see if I can get this to focus at all. Uh, I will say that these elbow bits here, uh, they are easier to glue on before you glue the arms to the model. Um, not a big deal if you do it the other way, but uh, I will also say that the hair strands are very skinny and they seem like they would be quite fragile. Um, so for cleaning up the, the spots where you clip it off the sprue, you're going to want a, a very sharp, nice new hobby knife blade for that and to be very careful with it. Uh, fortunately, I didn't have any breaks, but, you know, if you want to keep the, the hair with the bats, then you do need to be careful with it. Now, uh, before I do the sword swap, we... I, I do want to get it attached to the base, so that means we'll be building up the base next. Um, I will say, yeah, yeah, that absolutely would have fit on a 32 millimeter base just fine. So a little bit obnoxious, but yeah, it gives us some room for some basing. <clears throat> so just to get a nice start and some height on the model, I'm going to start with some of this medium cork. Yeah, it's what, like three-ish millimeters thick. Yeah, I'm just going to break off a nice little square of that. Boop. And to fit it to where we want on the base and just rip and tear until it fits the way we want. Something about like that. Make sure our Empire Lord is still gonna fit nicely on top of it. All right, that looks like it will just about fit well enough. So, some gluing. I didn't mention it in our uh, going over the materials, but I'll use some of this instant set to get super glued to here a bit faster. It's a very strong chemical smell, so you want good ventilation if you're doing that stuff indoors. Super glue, super glue, super glue. There we go. While I'm at it, I'm actually just going to pop off these little peg spaces on the bottom. Old Game Workshop models, the larger models used to come with pegs on the bottom that you'd drill through in one of these peg spots and that would hold them onto the base a bit more securely but I like to remove them. I'll put some magnet or some sheet metal down there or even just leave it open. It's more stable on uneven terrain if it's got that kind of hollow base to it. Here. There we go. Where's your dude? Okay. Is 
just taking a look here to see where I want to orient this. That looks about right. That especially helps with gluing stuff to the cork. I might skip it just gluing models together, but... Okay. You don't get a lot of time to work with it if you're using this stuff, though. There we go, that'll do. That more or less works, but let's see about adding a bit more kind of rocky bits to this. The cork is fine for kind of rocky terrain once you paint it, but the slate matches the kind of mottled terrain of the, the mini already a bit better. So we're going to use a bit of each. To get that to blend together nicely. Got a few bits to work with. <clears throat> now I will say the glue accelerant spray can kind of distress the the plastic on your models a bit so you want to be careful not to spray too much on or around the actual model be sure to give it time to dry okay something like that try and avoid the model as much as you can Okay, so we've built up our base a bit. That's nice. Let's put away our rock bits. All right, 
So there's our, our medium slate, and we still, let's see here, next up we're going to use some of the fine slate <clears throat> to fill in some of the gaps and work up a bit of texture. So for that, I just, can you see, yep, put in some blob of super glue where it's going to go. Drop in the slate. put some bits of this here and there for some different texture from the texture paint that'll go in later. And I like to do basing before painting, partially because I paint the bases, paint the basing material. Also, just the, the spray primer and, and base coats will help hold all that on there. <clears throat> and finally, a bit of the texture paint. Where's my applicator for that? There it is. All right, here we go. <clears throat> and finally, I use some texture paint. There's regular sterling mud, but we're painting over it, so it doesn't matter too much what you use. that to cover up any leftover bits of exposed base. All right. <clears throat> There is basing done, so got a slightly built up base there. Doesn't look quite so barren. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I'll let that dry a bit and we'll be back to look at the sword all right so some good news uh first i did miscount the number of swords in the blood knight kit so there are five swords so i can steal a sword for the vampire lord and use the standard bearer and still have swords on everything else no maces anywhere so that's nice um a slight downside is that the weapon arms are not made to be interchangeable between the Blood Knights, so depending on the sword that I pick for the Vampire Lord, I may have to do some further conversion to make the leftover sword arm fit whatever model I ended up stealing this sword from. But that's fine, that's no big deal. Again, weapon swaps are pretty straightforward conversions. So I've picked... Uh, this bit, 67, it's nice, long sword, got a bit of a curve at the very end, a pretty cool basket, so we're going to go with that. Just clip this off the sprue. <clears throat> 
Now getting it to fit will be a little bit of work. Um, I'm not sure if you can see here, but the armor of the Vampire Lord is such that the hand bit overlaps the forearm. Whereas on the Blood Knight armor, I don't know if you can see, but the forearm overlaps the hand. And that makes it a little bit difficult to just do a simple hand swap here. Not impossible, but it would be a little bit of a pain. Um, what I think I'm going to do is remove the whole forearm and then attach the kind of bat wing elbow piece there and that should create enough of a surface in there that I can remove the forearm from here and just glue it in like that. So that's what we're going to try for. Start. Want to remove this forearm while leaving as much of the elbow as I can. Again, a sharp hobby knife helps for this. There we go. And that's a salvageable piece in case I change my mind later and decide I like giant maces. <clears throat> so let's get out. The elbow piece, where are you? And trim up where I clipped it out. Just... All right, so there we've got that. Leave that to set, and do a bit of trimming on some mold lines here. A bit more noticeable on this particular Blood Knight sprue than on the uh, Vampire Lord sprue over there. Hmm. All right. And pop you off right there. <clears throat> oh, I should have done that in better view of the camera. Oh, well. Okay. We're looking at something roughly... Roughly like that. <clears throat> so then it's just a matter of trimming until the two f pieces fit more or less together. Trim some of that. Something like that. It honestly might be good enough. Normally for something like this, I would want to pin the pieces together. There's not a lot of surface area to work with here. So I might try and get away with just the plastic cement if I can get the join to fit nicely. Yeah. All right, let's try that out. <clears throat> Hmm. 
And if in the future it does break off, that's just a sign that it needed the pinning after all. And you can always pin it back together then. Oh. Elbow not quite set yet. Probably should have given that a little bit more time. All right. That looks pretty good. Looks pretty good, feels pretty solid. I'm going to give that a few minutes to set, and then we'll be back to attach it to the model. Alright, I'll see you then. Alright, it's had a bit to set. Here's a moment of truth. Yeah. Yeah, it's holding pretty good. All right. Yeah, that should be just fine as long as I don't drop it on its arm. <clears throat> Let's see here. And it should fit right in there. How is that? Like that? Yeah, like that. Okay. <clears throat> bit of glue and then out a bit. <clears throat> bit of glue pop it in There we go. One vampire lord with a nice sword instead of the big mace. And a fancy built up base so it doesn't look quite so barren on that 40 millimeter. Yeah, I quite like that. Yeah, that looks nice. Yeah. Just need to paint it and get the shield together. All right. Oh, I'm losing some of my light here. Fair enough. Okay. A little bit of light in here. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think that worked pretty well, and hopefully... You all could follow along with that if you needed a demonstration of a very basic weapon swap or how to build up a base a little bit. Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions. I don't know if I'm going to do a lot of these videos apart from what I need to do to get through the side quest for the painting challenge. But, you know, if you have any suggestions other than I guess other than better equipment, better microphone, that's just not really an option right now. But, uh, yeah, let me know. Hopefully that was helpful, and I'll see you for the next one.